Hello viewers, do you remember the good old days when gas was like two bucks per gallon? Back then, rarely anybody cared much about fuel economy and EPA ratings. Now though, with car prices being as astronomical as they are, the situation is a bit different and most of you are probably wondering how to get the most out of each gallon. And that's just what we're going to find out in this video as we check all the clever and simple tricks to improve gas mileage. Let's go! We'll start with the thing that converts that pricey gas into energy that moves us and our cars around, the engine. Needless to say, it needs to be in the best possible shape as this way we'll, quite literally, get the biggest bang for the buck. All cars, regardless of make and model, have an air filter that prevents dust and other particles from entering the engine. As you may imagine, these paper elements will get clogged after some time, which is why they have to be replaced regularly. Otherwise, the flow of fresh air going into the engine will be obstructed, reducing its power and increasing fuel consumption. Having said that, it might be a good idea to take out the air filter and, if it looks dirty, replace it. The next thing to check is the spark plugs, whose job is to ignite the compressed air fuel mixture inside the cylinders. But as the engine is running, unburned fuel and oil gradually form a layer of gunk on the plug's tip, preventing them from creating a strong, healthy spark. And while the engine might seemingly run fine despite having fouled plugs, its operation won't be fully efficient and will be slightly down on power. So, if the plugs in your car are easily accessible and you don't know when they were last replaced, take a socket, pull them out and check their condition. Furthermore, when speaking about optimal efficiency, we must note the engine in your car is designed to run at a certain temperature. Obviously, you don't want it to overheat, which can be easily spotted as the temperature gauge goes into the red zone. But a cold running engine, which is likely to happen if the thermostat is stuck open, is not desirable either as this will prevent it from reaching operating temperatures. Again, this will also cause the fuel consumption to go up. As you probably know, the engine oil, like the air filter and plugs, must be replaced within certain intervals. But when doing so, you must be careful about what your car needs. Is it full synthetic, semi-synthetic or mineral, which oil way to use and so on. If the oil is too thick, it will generate extra resistance for the pistons while they go up and down. On the other hand, if it's too thin, the oil will get past the rings and seals into the combustion chamber where it will foul up the spark plugs once again. So, the next time you're in for an oil change, make sure the stuff you'll be pouring in meets all the specifications set by the car maker. If not sure what these are, try looking in the owner's manual or leave the question in the comment section down below. Modern engines have multiple sensors to regulate the combustion process and make it as efficient as possible. This includes the MIF sensor, throttle position sensor and various temperature and pressure sensors, just to name a few, as well as the oxygen sensors on the exhaust. If their readings are slightly off, which is something that may happen if they are, for instance, covered with dirt or soot, this will mess up the air-fuel mixture. Although this may not be severe enough to trigger a check engine light, it will still affect the engine's performance and potentially increase fuel consumption. But anyway, you can always take an OBD scanner to see if there are any codes or check the live data from the sensors and compare them with the manufacturer's specification. Apart from the already mentioned components, you'll also want the rest of the engine to be in the best possible shape. Because if it's not running right, it won't be using the fuel most efficiently, which won't help gas mileage in any way. So if your car is hesitating, shaking or there are multiple warning lights on the dashboard, make sure to find out what's causing the issue. You can find out a lot about common engine problems and the ways to deal with them right here on our channel. Next, let's turn our attention to the rest of the car as there's probably some room for improvement there as well. First are the tires, which need to be inflated at a suitable pressure. Otherwise, if underinflated, their rolling resistance will go up, meaning the engine will use more power just to keep them going. Not to mention that such tires will wear out much quicker and that the car will be less stable during sudden maneuvers, which is definitely not something you'll want when, say, avoiding an obstacle on the highway. That's why you should check them once a month and ensure that they are inflated to the pressure determined by the car maker, which you can find on the sticker within the door frame or in the owner's manual. 
The aircon in your car has a compressor which is driven by the engine and as such it takes some power off of it. This consequently will increase consumption by some amount, though in most cases not as severe as usually presented. Nonetheless, if it's not too hot outside, consider turning off the AC and rolling down the windows, especially if driving slowly. Manufacturers are putting a lot of effort into making their cars as streamlined as possible, as this reduces wind drag, consequently improving gas mileage. This is not something you'll want to mess up, especially if driving a lot on the highway, as that's where the aerodynamics count the most. Here, you'll want to roll up the windows and, if it's hot outside, keep the aircon on, as this is more fuel-friendly. Furthermore, things like additional roof racks or ski boxes generate tremendous drag and that's why you need to take them off when not in use. Some of you may have a lot of stuff in the trunk of the car or in the back seat because, well, who cares? You're not carrying them on your back, aren't you? Your car, however, does have to carry this on its back and the heavier this load is, it will use more fuel. So, with that in mind, take all unnecessary things from your car. Not only will this make it lighter, but you'll also get rid of the clutter. Last, but by no means least important, is you. Or to be more precise, your right foot. Because the way we drive our cars might even have the most significant impact on fuel economy. As a general rule, to get better gas mileage, you'll want to keep your driving as smooth as possible. This includes avoiding harsh accelerations, because a lot of throttle equals high fuel consumption and hard brakings. For instance, if you're approaching a traffic light and can see from a distance it's red, ease off the throttle. This way, your car will be cruising down the road, which uses virtually no fuel at all. And even more, as it takes more time to get to the lights, there's a chance it'll turn green, meaning you won't have to stop and then set off from a standstill once again. Not sure if you know this, but the engine actually uses a lot of fuel just to move the car from a standstill. Those of you who had to push your car for any reason probably know this. At first it seems almost impossible, but once it gets going it's much easier. And that's precisely why we must try to avoid stop and go traffic if anyhow possible. Although this may seem easier said than done, several things just might do the trick. If possible, arrange your daily errands in a way you don't have to drive during rush hours. Or try finding alternative routes where the traffic is not so intense. And in the end, to answer one common question, is it better to shut off the engine when idling or to keep it running? To be honest, modern cars don't use that much fuel when idling. In most cases, this will be much less than a gallon per hour. So, turning off the engine at the traffic light probably won't make much difference, and you'll be putting additional strain on the starter and the battery. But if you're going to be stationary for several minutes, such as, say, waiting for someone, it's better to turn off the engine. So, there you have it, viewers. Those are some of the most simplest ways you can try to improve your gas mileage. Keep in mind that none of this won't probably make a big impact on their own, but try to combine them all together and you'll sure to see a noticeable drop in fuel consumption. If you found all this to be helpful, give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Lastly, for more practical advice and repair guides, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com. Bye!